Okta Lifecycle Management helps automate the daily onboarding and offboarding of your users. But your team has a whole laundry list of tasks to do beyond account creation. Things like setting up quotas in Salesforce, transferring assets in Box, or ensuring unique identities. Many organizations solve this by writing hundreds of lines of code or custom scripts. But this takes up precious time and it's difficult to maintain. The good news is there's a better way. Introducing Okta Lifecycle Management Workflows, an intuitive, highly customizable solution that automates complex identity-centric processes with no code at all. And here's how it works. We'll start here with a flow. A flow represents a business process you want to automate. Each flow is kicked off by some type of event, either an app assignment or a lifecycle status change. Then we use connectors to connect to your apps and send them instructions. And in between these, we use functions to create conditional logic, such as if-else branching or loops. What we're gonna be doing here is building out a couple of flows to provision and deprovision a user. Here's an outline for your reference. Now, let's jump into Okta and see how it all works. Here, we're on the Okta dashboard. We'll launch the workflow console from the workflow pulldown. And we're in. Let's create a new flow by clicking on new flow on the top right. Our flows go left to right, and flows can be kicked off by a wide range of events. If we click add event, you'll see you can kick off a flow using an Okta event or a third party event. You can also schedule flows to run or expose workflows as an API endpoint. For this flow, we'll pick Okta and pick the user added to group event. Next, we'll need to add a logical function here. To do that, we'll click the add functions button where we see a wide range of options like branching, flow control, as well as some data manipulation functions. For this flow, we'll add a continue if function to continue this flow if the group display name of the event equals sales. Next, we'll use a compose function to create the text that will represent our sales quota value, which is $500,000. And now, we'll add an app action to find our user in Salesforce. It's important to first find our users so that we know their unique Salesforce identifier, because it's not their email address. This will come in handy later in the flow. To do this, we'll use the search user app action and drag the username from the event card. Now that we've found a user, let's update them. Add another app action to update a user. Choose the quarterly quota field and drag the user's unique Salesforce ID from the previous search card and drag the output from our compose card into the quarterly quota field. And finally, let's send the user a welcome email along with their quota. We'll first compose the text, which will be the body of the message using a compose function. And next, we'll add an app action, but this time we'll choose our Office 365 mail connector and choose the send message option. Let's grab the user's email address from the event, give it a subject of welcome to at go, and bring in the body from the compose card. Save the flow and we're done. Now let's see it in action. I have my user here signed into their email and Okta. Back in Okta, let's add them to the Salesforce group, which will trigger our workflow. Click on the flow history and we'll see there was one successful flow executed. Looking at this successful execution, we can see all the data that came into the flow as the flow ran. Now let's refresh my user's email and you'll see they have a new email welcoming them to the company, along with their sales quota. Let's jump into Salesforce as well, and here we can see the user's sales quota is already set. Building flows is that easy. You simply take a business process, you break it into an event and a series of app actions, and you tie it all together with various functions. Now, let's go ahead and build out a deep provisioning flow. In this flow, we're kicking it off using a user removed from group event. From here, we'll continue the flow if the name of the group equals SDR. Next, we're gonna get a full read of the user using the read user card so that we have their full UD attributes, including their manager's name. We're gonna use that information to transfer the user's box files to their manager. To do that, we need to first search for the user in box and search for their manager. Both these searches will yield the box user IDs. And using these results, we'll use the transfer user folders card to transfer folders from our user's ID to their manager's user ID. Next, we'll remove the user's email address from the company all distribution list using the remove user from group card. And finally, we're gonna set an expiration date attribute to be 30 days from today. That will tell us when to remove their O365 license. We'll start by using the current date, then we'll use the add card to add 30 days to that date. Then we'll convert that to a custom format that's human readable. And now that we have the date, we'll use the Okta update user card to update their profile in Universal Directory. Well, there you have it. We just built out two flows, 
a provisioning flow to set a Salesforce quota and send out a welcome email using O365, and a deprovisioning flow to transfer box files, set an expiration date for license removal, and update our O365 distribution list. And we did it without any code at all, and all of it in Okta.